Kenny, did you hear? About your friend from when you were little. I heard she's living with her mother-in-law now. She's so mature for her age, taking responsibility to look after her mother-in-law. Oh. What was her name again? The one who lived in those run-down apartments. Brianna? Yeah, that's it. Brianna. Her mother-in-law needs a lot of care and needed someone to look after her. So that sweet girl thought it would be a good idea if her mother-in-law moved in with her so she could take care of her. Whatever. That kind of sounds like you now that you're living with Jake and his wife. You should be thankful your son is kind enough to let you live with them. I know. At least one of my sons cares about his little old mother. I always said that I thought you and Brianna should have gotten married. I don't remember that. I do remember you telling me never to go over to her apartment to play, though. Why would I ever say that? I remember ever since you were a teenager, you totally cut ties with her. But before that, you were best buds. The reason I lost touch with her is because you came over to her apartment, running and screaming. Saying that you didn't want me anywhere near those poor people apartments while we were playing together. You said, I never want you playing with my son ever again. You embarrassed me in front of everyone who lived there. I would never say that. You must not be remembering it since you were so little when it happened. I remember it clear as day. Thanks to you, all the kids called me a mama's boy after that. It was horrible. No, you're exaggerating. I always had a good feeling about Brianna. Ever since she was little, I knew. Knew what? I knew she was the type of person who really cares about others, and I was right. She's going through the trouble of looking after her mother-in-law. What are you talking about? You're the one who told me I couldn't play with her anymore. You really hurt her feelings that day. We were still in kindergarten. What are you talking about? I always knew she'd take care of her mother-in-law. I just think you need to find a girl that's nice, like Brianna. What are you trying to say? Are you complaining about Erica? You've been gossiping with Jake's wife, haven't you? No, no, no. I didn't do anything like that. I really don't know or care why you're saying any of this. But I don't need my mother to give me any love advice. It's giving me the creeps. I'm leaving on a business trip tomorrow, and I need to finish packing. Let's end this conversation. Who are you? And what have you done with my precious son? You never used to talk to your mother this way. Mm. Is it too much to ask for a mother to want to spend time with her family? Babe? Babe, babe, babe! Joe, are you there? What's wrong? Calm down. Your mom showed up out of nowhere. She said I'm moving in. What's going on? Do you know about this? What? Are you serious? I promise I had no idea. Is she there right now? Yeah. She showed up with a bunch of suitcases. She said the moving van is coming later. Please tell me you're lying. No, it's true. I wish it were a lie. Oh my gosh. What am I going to do? I'm really sorry to bother you with this while you're away on business. I'm sorry. I can't come home right away. I'll be back the day after tomorrow. As soon as I get back, I'll have a long talk with her. Do you think you could tough it out until then? 
If you don't think you can, you can tell her to leave. It's just hard to say. I know, honey, I'm so sorry. That's not what I mean. I mean, it's hard to say what your mom said to me. What? What did she say to you? She said she was here so she could take out the trash. What's that supposed to mean? She said from now on, only family can live here. She made it seem like I wasn't welcome. She really said that to you? My mom said that. Yeah, she did. When she first came over, I thought she was going to literally throw me out of the house. So I packed my bags and left. What? So where are you right now? Don't worry, I'm fine. I'm out of the house, but I'm about to get a room at a hotel. I'm really sorry to make you worry. Guess your mom really hates me. I had no idea. I really can't believe this. I know, right? Why is she being such a bully to you? I don't get it. This is the first time she's ever been like this towards me. I'm so sorry, I really am. I should have known she would do something like this. You don't need to apologize. There's no way you could have known, especially with how busy you've been at work. I should have been more upfront with your mother. I must have given her some false impression that I wanted her to move in with us. I'm really so, so sorry. You're on my side, though, aren't you? Of course I am. For the longest time, I've kind of been able to ignore her when she gets crazy like this. Even when I was really young, she'd pull crazy stunts like this. I'd never thought she'd target her craziness at you. I see. Actually, this isn't the first time she's been like this to me. Oh, please tell me what happened. Well, the other day I went over to your mom's place, right? She said she needed help in the garden, so I went over. Her. I'm sorry I never told you this. You probably should have known that I was going over there. None of this is your fault. You don't have to apologize. If this wasn't the first time she's been a bully to you, it won't be the last. Please, tell me every detail. Your grandma was there too, actually. She said that we should all have dinner together that night. So your mom said she'd order some food to the house. But when it got delivered, there wasn't any for me. My mom was the one who was in charge of ordering it? Yeah, her exact words were, I'll take care of ordering dinner. You just sit back and relax. Luckily, your grandma caught on to what your mom did right away. When your mom wasn't around, your grandma said to me, I can't believe she would be so cruel to her own daughter-in-law. I can't believe she did that to you. I don't think I've ever said a bad word about your mom before. Do you remember that funeral we went to a while back? A couple of your relatives came up to me and said, You better treat your mother-in-law right. She's a wonderful woman. What? I had no idea they said that to you. I'm sorry. It's okay. I could take it. Although, there was that one time your mom insulted my parents. That was the first time I really thought she might not be the angel people make her out to be. She talked bad about your parents? What is she thinking? I'm really, really sorry about all of this. I feel like I need to apologize over and over for her. Now you are the one who's apologizing. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Even though I said you didn't need to. Oh, well. I'm just so happy you believed me and that you're on my side. Yeah, but right now all I can do is apologize. I'll call you after I finish work. Oh, you're taking your lunch break right now, right? I'm sorry I took up all your time. Don't worry about that. You've already been through a lot today. Don't worry about me. Did you find a hotel yet? Yep. I think I can check in soon, so I'll make my way over in a little bit. Do you need any money? Nope, I'm fine. Tonight when I call you, let's figure out what we're going to do next. I'll text my mom right away. Sounds good. Kenny, thank you so much for being on my side. Mom! Oh, hey, Kenny. 
Working hard or hardly working, eh? <laughs> I don't need any of your sarcasm right now. Were you planning this all along? Were you waiting until I was away to do this? Whatever do you mean, son? I mean, you thinking you could just move in with us. I thought you were living with Jake and his wife. Erica told me everything. She said you just showed up unannounced with all your stuff. I thought you'd feel lonely living with just her and not having any family around. So I took it upon myself to come keep you company. The moving company is bringing the rest of my stuff over later. What were you thinking? Erica was very rude and didn't help me at all moving things into your place. And then she just disappeared. What is going through that little head of hers? Cut it out. Don't move anything else into our place. What's the moving company? I'm going to call and cancel right now. Don't do that. Since your little wife ran off when there was work to be done, I had to ask the nice movers to help me. You think it's okay to just show up unannounced to decide you're living with us now? What do you mean unannounced? I always said how nice it was for family to live together, right? Even if we're all packed like sardines in this little house of yours. Are you listening to me? It's not meant for three people. It's only big enough for me and Erica. Yeah, yeah, the two of you. By the way, what's that storage room near the front door? There's a bunch of clutter all over, and I'm gonna throw it all in there. What do you mean, clutter? I'm obviously going to be taking the master bedroom. So everything that I don't want is going into that storage room. That storage room is where Erica keeps her stuff. But it doesn't matter. Just go home. I'm serious. I'm staying right where I am. Especially since it seems like Erica ran off somewhere. I think you should really find someone better than her. She ran away because you took over our house. Stop being so selfish. Is that right? I think she really left for good. She packed all her stuff in a big suitcase and walked right out the door. I don't think she's ever coming back. Her entire dresser is empty. Why are you looking through her dresser? I didn't. I watched her clear it out. I saw those underwear of hers. What? All of it was totally indecent. I almost fainted when I saw it. I bet she ran off with another man, knowing that you'd be out of town for the weekend. I can tell she's that type of woman. You're lucky I'm here right now. Enough. I know you said to her you were there to take out the trash. I know what you meant. That's why she left. You're doing all of this on purpose. Taking out the trash? I'm the one who needs to clean up the mess you made. Don't say things like that. How could you bully her like this? Because that girl has no idea what it takes to be a proper wife. It's probably because of where she was brought up. I know her kind, and I can't stand people like her. Just because you don't like her, you think it's okay to harass her? That's what you think, don't you? She's disrespectful and indecent. You have to know that, too. She was raised in those low-income housing apartments. Do you realize how crazy you sound? Going through her dresser, talking about her underwear? Talking bad about her straight to me? You really need to take a hard look at yourself in the mirror. How could you say such a thing to your mother? She's rubbed off on you. I was afraid of this. You've gone too far. I knew she was no good for you. 
Her parents didn't raise her right. No matter how much of an act she puts on for you, she'll eventually show her true colors. I've been in shock since I came over. And I saw what she was really like. I said you've gone too far. I just talked with Jake. Oh, really? He must be worried about her, too. <laughs> but your brother has his own problems. Sticking up for his awful wife being one of them. He said he kicked you out of their house because you bullied his wife, too. Of course he's going to stick up for his wife. His wife did nothing to you. Did she tell you all of that? No, Jake did. Just listen to this. I really wanted to just live as a family with your brother. That was until that terrible woman got in the way. She acted like her and Jake were real family. Yes, they are a family. Yeah, right. Me and Jake have way more family history than he does with her. Family history? What are you saying? That doesn't matter. Jake and his wife are family, just like Erica and I are. Now ah, listen to yourself. You need to accept that your little wife ran off. Why don't you be a good little boy and come home to mommy? Oh, I just had a great idea. Why don't we ask your brother to live here with us, too? We can be one big happy family. Get out of our house. I already told you, Erica is my family now. Don't be ridiculous. You're the one that's being ridiculous. I have to worry about my life with Erica now. I'm a grown, married man. I'm not going to let you live with us. I knew it. You really changed, haven't you? You're breaking your mother's heart. And you're as crazy as always. Always selfishly doing whatever you want. You think the world revolves around you. Every time I talk to you, it's like pulling teeth. How dare you say that? Is that any way to speak to your mother? Like I said, get out of our house. I want you gone before I get back from my business trip. That's our home, not yours. I told you to dump that low-life girl. Once you have kids, you're really trapped. I really think you should stop insulting her like that. I think you must be missing something. Do you really know where she was brought up? Yeah, in those run-down low-income housing projects. I know all about the type of people that live there. Those run-down apartments are reserved for high-ranking government officials. Huh? What are you talking about? Erica's parents, who you were so quick to badmouth, are both judges. And so were my friend Brianna's parents. They all lived there. Don't you remember how much we talked about this when you met them for the first time? You're living in your own little world. You ignore everyone around you and believe what you want to. You're a complete laughingstock. Laughingstock? Me? Yeah, you. It's honestly so embarrassing. Do you finally have a grip on reality now? I'll say it one last time. You are absolutely not living with us. What am I supposed to do? I think you're also forgetting a very important point. I'm not legally your son anymore. I legally changed my last name to Erica's. Now there's nothing you can do. By the way, Erica bought that house before we were married. If you aren't going to leave, we're going to sue you for trespassing on private property. Even though we're family? You'd really do that? You said it yourself. Erica isn't family. You said that, didn't you? 
And you better know that once we sue you, the judge that's going to be on stand is her own father. So I'd get out of there if I were you. Just hang on a second. You're not living with us. And Jake kicked you out of his place. I guess you have nowhere else to go. Well, unless you live with Grandma. No way! Living with her is like torture. We never got along. Don't mention any of this to her. Why not? She's your mother, isn't she? You have way more of that family history with her than any of us. Wow, you'd really be getting what you wanted. Finally living with family. I told my grandma everything that happened. As soon as I did, she dropped everything and went over to my house. When I checked my phone after work, I had a text from Erica saying, Your grandma was nice enough to offer to let me stay with her. My grandma practically dragged my mom, kicking and screaming, out of my house. My mom was wailing, saying, I just want to live with my family. I heard all about it when I called Erica that night. She also said, I declined your grandma's kind offer to let me stay since I already got a hotel room. But I want to go give your mother a piece of my mind. That's our house, not hers. But as soon as she got there and saw the battle going on between my mom and grandma, she changed her mind. When I got home from my business trip, I made sure to apologize to Erica face to face for everything my mom put her through. She replied, Well, maybe your mom was right. This house might be too small for three people. I think it might be time to find a bigger place, she said, smiling and holding her stomach. Chris, where were you last night? You didn't come home. Hey, Mandy, I was at Michael's place. We had a project to work on. Seriously? I find that hard to believe. You're always at Michael's whenever something comes up. It's not like that. We really needed to finish this project. Chris, it's been like this since we had our daughter. You've changed. What do you mean? I'm just busy with work. Busy? You left when our daughter needed you the most. Remember when she was diagnosed with autism? Mandy, it's not that simple. You requested a transfer and stayed away for five years, Chris. Five years! You visited only three times. I had to work. It was for our future. Our daughter needed you, Chris. She still does. And you know what? You didn't buy anything for her. That's not true. I, I bought diapers. One diaper, Chris. One. Do you know how hard it is for me to take care of her alone? I'm doing what I can. Work is demanding. Demanding? It's been excuses after excuses. Every time she asks for you, you either end the call abruptly or say you're too busy. I'm not avoiding her. It hurts, Chris. Every time she says she misses you, it hurts. I'm doing my best. You don't understand how hard it is for me. Hard for you? Chris, you've been away for most of her life. Do you even know her favorite color? Or what she likes to do after school? Mandy, I'm trying to make things right now. Trying now? <laughs> That's a big lie. I can't keep pretending everything is okay for her sake. She deserves better. I'm here now. Let's work this out. It's not that simple, Chris. You can't just show up and expect everything to be fine. She's been hurt too many times. I love her, Mandy. I want to be in her life. Love is not just words, Chris. It's actions. And your actions speak louder. What can I do to make things right? It's not about one grand gesture, Chris. It's about consistently being there for her, not just when it's convenient for you. I'll try, Mandy. I promise. You keep saying this. It's going to take more than promises, Chris. Guess what? I don't even believe you anymore. Your behavior has been even worse lately. You can't even hide how you feel about our daughter. She disgusts you, right? You aren't proud of her, right? Just admit it. Hello? Chris! Chris? Anna has been throwing tantrums and screaming all day. She keeps saying your name. Can you talk to her on a video call? 
Sorry, Mandy, I have a meeting in 15 minutes. Can't talk on the phone right now. It won't take long. Just a few seconds. Please. Alright, fine. But make it quick. How could you end the call like that, Chris? She wasn't saying anything, just crying and saying, Dada, what am I supposed to say? I have a meeting in a few minutes, Mandy. Can't lose focus. Since you ended the call, Anna's tantrums have gotten worse. Can you please pick up her call one more time and just tell her you love her? I'm not doing that, Mandy. You're really hurting her, Chris. I'm in tears over your actions. Chris, how can you just ignore your daughter when she is in pain? This isn't the family I wanted. I'm not happy. If you're not crying, Anna is crying. It's so frustrating. You're the cause of her tears, Chris. I've had enough, Mandy. I need a break from all of this. A break? Chris, we're a family. You can't just check out when things get tough. I can't handle this constant drama. I need some peace. Our daughter is not drama, Chris. She's a child who misses her father. I can't do this right now, Mandy. I, I need time alone. Time alone? Anna needs you. I can't deal with this right now. I'll talk to you later. I've had enough of this depressing conversation. I'm going offline. Hey Mandy, some high school buddies are coming over this weekend. Think you and Anna could stay at your friend's place for a bit? Stay at my friend's place? Why? Are you not proud of our daughter or something? No, it's not that. I just don't want to be embarrassed. Embarrassed? What are you talking about? Well, you know how Anna can be. She'll throw tantrums and it'll ruin the whole party. I won't be able to hang out with my friends. Embarrassed? You're worried about being embarrassed because of our daughter? Look, she's clingy. She'll want me to carry her all the time. How can I enjoy the party like that? She's our child, Chris. She's healthy, just with autism. She's beautiful and deserves your love and attention. I know, but with all my friends bringing their healthy kids, it's just gonna be uncomfortable. Uncomfortable? You're more concerned about your comfort than our daughter's feelings? It's not about that. I just want to get down with my friends without any complications. You know what, Chris? It's fine. I won't be at the party. I can't believe you'd say such things about our daughter. Mandy, it's not like that. I just want everything to go smoothly. Smoothly? You'd rather have a smooth party than be there for your daughter? I would have dumped you for this, but I'm scared it would greatly affect Anna. Mandy, it's not like that. I just want to avoid unnecessary drama. Unnecessary drama? Our daughter is not drama, Chris. She's a part of us, and she deserves better. Look, I just thought it would be easier for everyone if you guys weren't there. Easier for everyone, or just easier for you? Mandy, come on. I didn't mean to upset you. Chris, you need to see our daughter for who she is. She loves you so much, and you're worried about being embarrassed. Mandy, I didn't think it would hurt you this much. I just wanted a stress-free get-together. Well, you can have your stress-free party. I'll take Anna somewhere she's wanted and loved. Mandy, wait. I, I didn't mean to hurt you or Anna. I just didn't think it through. Lies again as usual. I'm sure you are dying with joy because I agreed to take Anna away. Hey, Mandy, what the hell? I told you not to bring Anna to the party. Chris? You must be out of your mind if you expect me to hide our baby from your friends. I'm proud of her, and you should be too. I dropped you guys off an hour before the party. I even offered to pick you up at 8pm. You should have stuck to the plan. Why couldn't you? Anna was crying wanting to see you. I'm not hiding her. And I had my own plan, Chris. Your plan ruined the party. Hannah nearly threw the cake away for crying out loud. Chris, our daughter made the party lively. She played with the other kids, and your friends loved her. Loved her? She was running around pulling their shirts, for God's sake. They gushed over her. It was adorable. You're just being too uptight. Uptight? She disrupted the whole party with her cries and screams. Chris, you're overreacting. Besides, I've got something to tell you. What now? Ever since Anna's birth, you've been depressed. 
You blame me for giving you a special needs child. Damn right! I never imagined my life like this. A baby that stole my freedom. Chris, this is our child. Blaming me won't change anything. You're unbelievable. I'm moving out. I can't tolerate your behavior anymore. I've hoped for a day like this. Why did it take you so long to say this? Because of my daughter. I endured your horrible treatments because of her. I put up with everything you had to offer because of her. Chase her away all you want. She is your blood. I don't care. It's a relief you're leaving. I want you to go far away. Fine. We'll be just fine without you. Good. Leave and never come back. Don't worry. We won't. Hey, Mandy, I've got to say, I'm really disappointed in you. Oh, great start to the conversation. What's up? I've been keeping an eye on you, you know? Ever since you moved to that fancy area, how can you afford to live there? Seriously? That's your opening question? I work remotely and I earn well. It's not rocket science. Well, I've been watching, and I know your high school friend Jordan has been visiting quite a lot. Are you cheating on me? Wow, Chris, that's a stupid question. First, I work hard, and second, Jordan's just a friend. Get a grip. You can have all the friends you want, but remember, we're still married. Are you cheating on me or not? You're the one who made it crystal clear that you want nothing to do with me and our daughter. So why do you even care? You're free to do whatever, but not until we're legally divorced. Have you forgotten about the papers I sent you? I sent them back weeks ago. You're the one dragging your feet. Whatever. I have my reasons. Yeah, well, when you're done with those reasons, maybe we can get this divorce finalized. Our daughter is sick, by the way. Sick? Is that another excuse? No, it's not an excuse. She's genuinely unwell and I'm dealing with it alone. Well, maybe if you weren't so focused on your high-flying life, you'd have time for her. You think I enjoy this? I've been dealing with some terrible treatments lately. It's not all glamour, Chris. I don't know what to believe anymore. Believe what you want. I'm not pushing for you to sign those papers because I'm dealing with our daughter's illness and processing all the emotions. Once that's done, we can talk about the divorce. You expect me to just wait around? I expect you to understand that life isn't always convenient. I didn't plan for our daughter to be sick or for our marriage to end like this. Well, you deal with your emotions and I'll deal with mine. Fine. That's all I can ask for right now. Whatever. Hey, Mandy, gotta tell you, I'm pretty disappointed in you. Disappointed? Seriously, Chris? We haven't spoken in a month and this is the first thing you say? I've been keeping tabs on you since you moved to that fancy area. How can you even afford to live there? Oh, come on. You know I work remotely and I make decent money. It's not like I'm living on caviar and champagne. Well, I've been watching, and I know Jordan from high school has been around a lot. Are you cheating on me? Cheating? That's ridiculous. Jordan is just a friend, and I'm not into playing those games. You can have all the friends you want, but we're still married. Are you cheating or not? That's a lame question. We're not really together anymore, are we? You made that clear when you said you wanted nothing to do with me or our daughter. Fine, if you want to cheat, do it after we're legally divorced. Jordan is my friend. Just because you aren't there for me and your daughter doesn't mean someone else won't. You can believe whatever you want about Jordan. I won't waste a minute trying to convince you that there is nothing between us. By the way, I sent you the divorce papers two weeks ago and you haven't bothered to sign them. <laughs> whatever, I have my reasons. Of course you do. I'm not bugging you about the papers because I'm dealing with our sick daughter. She needs me more than this paperwork. Sick? Is that another excuse? No, it's not an excuse. She's genuinely unwell and I'm taking care of her alone. I know you secretly don't want me to sign the divorce papers. These are all just excuses. Believe what you want. I'm not rushing you to sign those papers. Once I'm done with all this emotional turmoil, we can talk about it. Well, you deal with your emotions and I'll deal with mine. That's all I can ask for right now. Just whatever, Chris. 
Chris, I really regret messaging you, but I have no choice. Anna fell from the stairs and broke her leg. We're in the hospital. Great job, Mandy. What were you doing when Anna climbed the stairs and fell? This is not the time for criticism, Chris. Anna will be fine. We'll get discharged soon. But she'll be in a bandage for three months. Failed as a mother, haven't you? Seriously? That's the last thing I need right now. Maybe if you'd given birth to a healthy baby, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Chris, I'm only reaching out because of Anna. She's been crying nonstop for you. She misses our old house. I'll do anything to make her happy right now. Chris, can we come over after Anna gets discharged? That's what Anna wants. Chris? I know things between us are messed up, but this is about Anna. Can you at least think about her happiness? Anna deserves to see her father, Chris. Don't let your issues with me affect her. Why should I let you and Anna into my life now? It's not about us, Chris. It's about Anna. She's your daughter and she needs you. Yeah, I'm sure she does. She does, Chris. You may not want anything to do with me, but Anna is innocent in all of this. Maybe you should have thought about that before ruining everything. This is not the time to throw blame around, Chris. Anna needs her parents, even if they're not together. I'll think about it. Thank you. It means the world to Anna. Don't expect anything from me. I'm not expecting anything from myself, Chris. It's all for Anna. Please, just think about it. She's your daughter and she loves you. We'll see. That's all I can ask for right now. For Anna's sake. Hey, Mandy, I won't be coming back home tonight. Honestly, Chris, I don't care. Your presence hasn't exactly been noticeable since we moved back in. It hurts to hear you say that. I never wanted things to be like this. Well, it's the reality. Once I get better, I'm out of here. We don't need you. You don't understand, Mandy. The reason I've been leaving is that I can't bear to see our daughter in pain. Really? Because it seems like you can't bear to be with us at all. No, it's not that. Since you both have been here for the past month, I feel closer to her. Every night you don't sleep, it breaks my heart. That's why I don't want to come home. You've been avoiding us because you can't handle our daughter's pain? I've been a weak man, Mandy. I failed as a father. It's time for me to face my weakness. Apologies won't fix the past, Chris. I know, but... I need you to know that I'm sorry for how I've treated both of you over the years. I'll make it up to both of you, I, I promise. I'm not getting my hopes high, Chris. You've said things like this before. I mean it this time, Mandy. I want to be there for both of you. Actions speak louder than words, Chris. I know, and I'm ready to show you that I can change. We'll see, Chris. We'll see. Hi, how are my babies doing? It's break time. Decided to check on you both. You've really been caring lately. It's strange, yet feels good. I told you to trust me. Well, not so fast. It's fine. I, I messed up, and I'm gonna spend the rest of my life making amends. Anna is definitely proud of the dad you are becoming. Hey there, birthday girl. Just finished up at work. I'll be home in about two hours? Hi! Can't wait. Are you excited about the party? Absolutely. By the way, are you wearing that beautiful red gown I got you? That's awesome. I can almost feel the party vibes from here. It's gonna be great. Oh, and thank you for doing this. It means a lot. No problem at all. Anything for you. And hey, I'll grab your birthday cake on my way home. You're the best. Turning a new leaf suits you well. Honestly, it's the best decision I've ever made. Seeing you happy makes it all worth it. It really does. I appreciate it more than you know. Anna's been looking forward to this. Can't wait to be home. How could you do this to me, Mandy? I just woke up in the hospital surrounded by police. You're heartless, you know that, right? You're the terrible one, Chris. I'm sure you know quite well why the cops are there with you. You tried to poison me. I, I I wasn't thinking straight. I thought it would solve everything, but now I see how wrong I was. Our own daughter saved me, Chris. She told me not to eat the cake you gave me, so I swapped it. 
You ate it, started gasping, and passed out. If I was as heartless as you, I wouldn't have called 911. I messed up, Mandy. I, I didn't realize the consequences until it was too late. You could have killed me. What possessed you to do such a thing? I, I, I don't know. The pressure, the stress. I, I, I lost myself. I need help, Mandy. Help? You need to face the consequences. The police will handle this when you're discharged. Mandy, please, I never meant for it to go this far. I, I love you and Anna. I need a chance to make things right. Make things right? You tried to take my life. You can tell the cops the reason when you are finally behind bars. I'm begging you, Mandy. I'll do whatever it takes to make amends. It's too late for that. I can't trust you anymore. Our daughter doesn't deserve this. Think about Anna. She needs her parents together. You know how much Anna loves me. She needs a safe and loving environment, not a father who tries to poison her. I messed up, Mandy, but I, I, I can change. I'll get help. It's not about you anymore, Chris. It's about Anna's safety. I love you both. Please, don't let me go to jail. I, I'll do anything to make it right. You'll have to face the consequences, Chris. I can't protect you from that. Mandy, I'm sorry. I never wanted it to come to this. Sorry won't undo what you did. I'll see you in court. Chris was found guilty of attempted murder and sentenced to prison. He eventually confessed that he tried taking my life, so he could put our daughter up for adoption. He wanted nothing to do with her because of her condition, and he knew I would be a hindrance to his plan, so he decided it's best to get rid of me. Thankfully, his plan failed. We also got divorced. As for my beautiful daughter, she is doing very fine. She's an intelligent and kind girl who loves to put a smile on people's faces. With time, she got used to Chris's absence. She learned that he isn't a great dad. Fortunately, my high school friend Jordan plays the role of a father in her life. Jordan and I began dating two years after Chris got sentenced. Jordan and Anna get along very well. He is everything Anna ever wished for in a dad. I'm glad things turned out this way for me.